Right. Ed, thank you. Good to see you. And moments ago, Senator Rand Paul going on the record. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Good to be here. Well, sh rather shocking news to many tonight, the email from uh, Henry Chow um, about the rollout. Your thoughts? Well, I thought the president said if he knew anything about this, he probably wouldn't have uh, opened up and started the exchange. So uh, it is surprising, uh, I guess startling, that uh, a lot of knowledge was that they weren't ready for prime time, and yet they went ahead with it anyway. You know, uh, first of all, if, if I run any of the committees, what I would do is I'd go back and look at Henry Chow's testimony to see if anything he said under oath conflicted with, with this email, because this email shows that on September 25th, he certainly knew. In fact, uh, actually what he attached to it was uh, a screenshot of the website and the screenshot of the website says the system is down at the moment so he knew that yeah we're finding out that my staff and myself we're trying to get on Obamacare because we have to sign up to the exchange and so we are familiar with the error screen in, in, the, in looking at his, Henry Chow's emails and he's the CMS tech official what struck me is what's not there we used to always in the courtroom do something called impeachment by omission what are you not saying and what he's not saying is that there's, he's saying absolutely nothing about the American people what he is saying, he's worried about the media ramping up the hyperbole about HCGov not functional. So he's worried about what the media would say about them. Not one word about the American people. Right. Well, see, and if this were a private business, they'd be worried about it being functional, not a media reaction. They would want to make sure that it's going to work. And that's really the problem here. We're turning over a sixth of our economy to the government, which doesn't work on a profit motive, doesn't have to please the customer. And I know this firsthand. I've been a physician for 20 years. So I've already been dealing with the, the health care through government, through Medicare and Medicaid. And personally, it's not very friendly. But it's always been the physician that had to deal with an unfriendly government. Now it's every consumer in America, every individual patient in America is going to have to deal with an unfriendly government. And I think we're finding they're, they're not going to be too pleased. All right, well, we have these emails today. And last night, President Obama pretty much suggested that the GOP was in the way of fixing these glitches. Are you in the way? Well, the interesting thing is we offered, before all of this came out, we offered him a, a pass. We offered him a whole year where he didn't have to go through this individual mandate. None of this that he's going through right now would have happened if he would have taken us up on his offer. And our offer really was during the middle of the shutdown. We were offering a compromise. One, one year delay of the mandate, and he would have avoided a lot of this. So where does this leave us now? I mean, you know, I guess that it's, it's, it might be particularly appalling to the American people to find out that they care more about the media going after them for a website they knew about wasn't going to work as of October 1. Uh, but w what about the American people? Where does this lead us? Well, I don't think it's fixable. I will vote to try to fix it. I'll vote to try to help people not have their insurance canceled. But really, it's too late because what's happened is the 5 million people have been canceled even if you say, oh, you can go back to your previous policy, the policies don't exist, and the insurance companies have been given a perverse incentive. They're told, they're told you know what, we're going to force your customers to buy a more expensive policy, so they're not going to offer the cheaper policies anymore. If you can't fix this, and if they're not going to offer the cheap policies, and if this is a mess that can't be fixed, is there any way to roll it back to where we were? Are we too far down the track? You could, but the president would have to admit that he's failed and that it's not going to work. And he may have to. I never really thought it could be this bad. This is worse than I ever imagined it could be. But it could spiral and get worse because over the next year, if young, healthy people don't sign up because it costs too much, then it costs even more. So if by the end of the year this becomes a high-risk pool and only the sickest people who get insurance and no young, healthy people buy it, they have to readjust their prices and they go higher and there's even more incentive for young people not to buy insurance, which drives the prices even higher. Which is sort of interesting. Your home state at actually Kentucky actually seems to be working, well, it's a state exchange. You took a Medicaid expansion, your state did, and you have young people signing up in, in a proportion that, uh, at least statistically, looked good. Maybe. I mean, still 40 times more people have been canceled than are signing up. 7,000 people have signed up and 280,000 people have been canceled. Many of them are young and healthy that have been canceled because this is the individual market. So by far and away, more people have been canceled than have signed up. So I'm not sure they can really call Kentucky a success. All right, before we go, one quick question on Detroit. Detroit's a mess, but you have an idea. Well, we're excited. We're going to go uh, announce something called Economic Freedom Zones, and this is bringing low taxes and less regulations to impoverished areas. And we think this is the kind of stimulus that's leaving more of your own money in your own hands that could actually work to help Detroit. Senator, thank you, sir. Nice to see you.